www.attabliq.com The Reviver of Iman I'm going to say this is a good thing I'm going to say this بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نون والقلم وما يسطرون ما انت بنعمة ربك بمجنون وان لك لاجرا غير ممنون وانك لعلى خلق عظيم صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله I would like to first thank Mulana Ibrahim sir for giving me the opportunity to come here and talk to you I would like to thank you all for coming down MashaAllah I know as Mulana Ibrahim Sahib said it's Saturday There might be football on as well Your minds could be elsewhere But still you sacrificed your time, you sat here May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me Tawfiq to say something which is beneficial For all of us MashaAllah Khalis Abdul recited very nice Quran. May Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give barakat in Khalis Abdul's voice mm-hmm. and give him tawfiq to recite more. Mm-hmm. Khalis Abdul recited Surah Al Hujurat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some etiquettes of our lives, how we should spend our lives. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about respect of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we should not raise our voices in the presence of our beloved Prophet ﷺ. Sahabas used to talk very softly with the Prophet ﷺ. Sometimes some of their you know, voices might have got raised for some reason. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La tarfa'u wa suwatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. So after that, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu would speak so softly that many times Prophet sallallahu would have to inquire, repeat what you said, I didn't hear properly. This was Hazrat Umar's adab for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a sahabi by the name of Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas. He had naturally very loud voice. He was talking casually, naturally, but his voice would be very loud. And he was Khatibul Ansar. So when there would be a competition of speeches, the Ansar would put him forward. And he would be, bam, bam, bam. You know, like you get some speakers, with kursi bhi de de. You know, fire and fury. So he was literally, in that sense, furious. You know, fire, you know, very hot, mukarrir. So, unbeatable. Now when this ayat was revealed, he sat in his home. He stopped coming to the masjid. So Prophet Sallallahu <coughs> inquired, what's wrong with Sabit? I haven't seen him for a few days. Is he, is he unwell? Is he sick? So his neighbor said, no, yeah, so I don't think he's sick. He's alright, but I don't know why, but I'll inquire. So he went and said, Prophet Sallallahu was asking about you. He's missing you. And he said, well, Allah Pak has revealed Surah Hujurat. And Allah Pak said, an tahbata amalukum wa antum la tashurun. That if you raise your voices in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Then your a'mal could be nullified, void, wiped out Because of your disrespect to the Prophet Your a'mal could be wiped out And I always raise my voice, I, can't, I don't realize And uh, you know, I am a Jahannami, my a'mal are all gone I, I'm not going to get any sawab from Allah but My a'mal have been habd So the Sahabi came and said, Ya Rasulullah, he is scared because of this, that he, his voice is normally raised and he can't control it. So Prophet ﷺ said, no, 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 tell him, tell him, don't worry, don't worry, come, come back, sit, sit in the majlis and tell him, you, your amal are not nullified, they are not wiped out, your amal are accepted by Allah, you do everything for the sake of Allah and His Rasul wasallam." And he said, tell him, Amma tarda." أن تعيش سعيدا وتقتل شهيدا وتدخل الجنة. Would you not be happy to spend a life of saadat and good fortune and die as a shaheed and go into Jannah? So the Sahabi went and gave him the good news and Sabit immediately started frequenting but still he used to be careful in the presence of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now, time passes, Prophet Sallallahu dies, Abu Bakr Siddiq is Khalifa, there is a huge battle with some Murtaddeen, 
یہاں جنگی یماما ود مسلمہ کا ذاب اینڈ دیر واز اے لٹل بٹ آف یو نو ڈیفیٹ پی صحابہ واز ٹیرنگ آرمی واز ٹیرنگ ایٹ ڈیفیٹ پر ثابت ابن قیس ابن شماس رضی اللہ عنہ سے بھائی ما ہا کا ذاکنا نقاتل وی نیور یوز ٹو فائٹ لائک دس یو بریو واریئرز نائٹ ہوڈ یو نو اینڈ وی یوز ٹو بی بریو ان دا بیٹل فیلڈ واٹ از دیس پیپل رننگ فلینگ ہیئر اینڈ دیئر ہی پٹ ہیز کفن آن ہی پٹ ہیز کفن آن اینڈ دین ہی ٹوک ہیز ویپنس اینڈ ہی جسٹ اینٹر دا بیٹل فیلڈ اینڈ ہی فوٹ اینڈل ہی بیکیم شہید So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prophesied that you're going to be a shaheed and that prophecy was fulfilled. So, this shows how much adab, respect we should have for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for the majlis of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for the masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for the rawza of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we go there, we have to show utmost respect. We shouldn't scream loudly with our salat or salam. We should say it with adab and respect. As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. As-salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah. As-salamu alayka ya Habib Allah. As-salamu alayka ya Khair Khalqillah. As-salamu alayka ya Shafi al-Mudhanibin. As-salamu alayka ya Khatam al-Nabiyin. As-salamu alayka ya Imam al-Muttaqeen. As-salamu alayka ya Sayyid al-Anbiya wal-Mursaleen. So we should say our salam softly, gently, nicely. Realizing that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is hearing our salams and uh, he is replying to our salam as well. So, this is adab of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After mentioning some adab and etiquettes, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala goes on to give us some instructions regarding our social life. لا يسخر قوم من قوم Don't make fun of one another. And لا تلمزوا أنفسكم Do not find faults in one another ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب Do not give bad nicknames to one another اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن Stay away from having bad thoughts about others Thinking bad about other people Don't think bad about other people And ولا تجسسوا Do not investigate unnecessarily into other people's matters. Keep yourself to yourself. Why do you worry about other people, what he is doing, what she is doing? What doesn't concern you? Don't investigate regarding those matters. Keep yourself to yourself. And لا يغتب بعضكم بعضا Don't backbite. Backbiting is no good. You see, number one is we shouldn't make mockery fun of one another. We should behave properly. Why make fun of someone? Maybe that person of whom we are making fun is better than us. We are, we are bad, they are good in the eyes of Allah and we are making fun of them. We should be crying over ourselves. I am a sinful person, I am a bad person, he is a good person, she is a good person. Why should I make fun of them? And why should I try to find faults in one another, blame one another, ac- accuse one another? Slander someone, slandering, accusing someone is no good. La tell me do one wasakum. Don't slander and accuse false accusations on people. And then La Tana Bazu Bil Al Kaab. Sometimes you give someone a bad nickname and that nickname sticks to the person and wherever he goes, people talk about him with that nickname, so and so, such and such, so and so, such and such. So don't give anyone nickname, otherwise every time someone calls him with that nickname, you will get guna. Because you gave him that nickname. You defamed him and debased him within the community, put him down within the community. And then, اجتنبو كثيرا من الظن. Three things over here, six. Among the six, these three are, بدغمانی, don't think bad about one another. تجسس, don't go into other people's private lives. And غیبت. First is badgumani, you think bad about others. And then second is tajassus, you start investigating. And then backbiting. So if you stop at the badgumani and having bad thoughts, then you, you, you would not have taken the second step and the third step. But because you took the first step, you're going to take the second one as well and the third one as well. So keep your mind clean, keep your heart clean. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to keep his heart clean. Keeping, his heart, keeping the heart clean is a great sunnah. 
of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said it in the hadith. Ya bunayya, in qadar ta an tusbiha wa tumsiya wa laysa fi qalbika ghashun li ahadin fafal. ثم قال يا بني وذلك من سنتي ومن أحب سنتي فقد أحبني ومن أحبني كان معي في الجنة. He said to Anas ibn Malik, who was a 10, 15 year old child like most of you sitting over here, he was a teenager, but he used to do khidmat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He used to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He used to stay close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did khidmat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for 10 years. He he was 10 when the Sulla Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Medina Munawwara. And his mother brought him because he was yatim, his father had died. So his, his mother said, Ya Rasulullah, my son Anas is very intelligent. I want him to stay in your khidmat. Please accept him for your khidmat. So he used to do khidmat throughout the day and at night he would come home, stay with his mom. But during the day he would go and stay with the Prophet And in this manner he stayed with him for 10 years as much as he could. So uh, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he says, that I did Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's khidmat for ten years. Now I might have, I did used to make some mistakes as well, something wrong here and there, but never ever did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say "oof" to me. And never ever did he say "why did you do this?" Never did he say "why did you not do this?" So he never rebuked me. He was the most softest, <coughs> gentlest, kind person you could ever think of. So he says that once Prophet ﷺ advised me, he said, Ya Bunaya, dear son, if it is possible for you to spend your morning and your evening in such a manner that there is no ill feelings in your heart for anyone within the society, then do so. Don't keep any ill feelings, any jealousy, any hasad, any wrongdoings, any any bad thoughts, any rancor, malice, <coughs> gussa, anger upon anyone. Get rid of all that. Keep your heart clean. If it is possible for you to do this, then do so. Fafal. And then he said, Ya Bunaya wazalika min sunnati. This is my sunnat, my, my practice, my way of life. I don't keep any grudge with anyone in my heart. My heart is always clean from everyone. Even if someone hurt and abused the Prophet ﷺ, still he wouldn't keep any grudge against him. I mean, people slandered him, accused him, spat on his face, swore at him. But then, when the time came that they were at his mercy... He asked them, I have full control over the city of Makkah now. It's under my control. You are under my control. What is your perception regarding me? What do you think am I going to do with you? Am I going to take revenge from you for everything you did from me? That's what he went to say. He said, Ma bikum. And they all said with one voice, Akhun kareemun wabnu akhin kareemin. You are our noble brother and the son of our noble brother. We only expect good from you. And he said, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين اذهبوا فأنتم الطلقاء Let there be no reproach against you today. May Allah forgive you. He is أرحم الراحمين Go, you are all free. Allahu Akbar. You know, if you look at the history, from now back to Adam Alayhi Salam, whenever an army is victorious over its enemies, they shed blood, they cause chaos, they wreak havoc within the city, and they take full revenge from their enemies. Over here in Fatih Makkah, that is the only one example wherein no innocent blood was shed. The only example, wherein the Prophet ﷺ forbade the Sahaba from raising their hands on anyone. He stopped them, he said, don't kill anyone. One of the Sahaba, Sa'd ibn Ubadah, was 
the flag bearer and he was the lead and head of the army and he was in a buoyant mood and he was saying al yawm yawmul malhama today is being going to be the malhama malhama means the huge battle today is going to be the world war we going to take our revenge today for what they have done to us over the past 20 years or so al yawm yawmul malhama so he was from the ansar and many ansaris were killed in badal in uhad in khanda in other battles he was the leader of the ansar now one of the quraish and muhajirin approached the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said ya rasulullah today quraish is going to be wiped out so he said why why are you saying this he said sa'd ibn ubada is saying this and he said no 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 and he changed the phrase he just changed the lam with ra and he said al yawm yawm al marhama today is not the day of malhama the huge battle today is the day of marhama rahim and mercy i'm going to show my extreme mercy to quraish and he immediately took away the flag from sa'd ibn ubada demoted him however because he was the leader of the community of khazraj so in order to keep him happy he gave the flag to his son qais ibn sa'd and he said qais you be the leader of that battalion and make sure you don't hurt anyone innocent just he he advised battalions to enter makkah from various sides from northern eastern southern western and he himself was finally entering and his entry was amazing never has the world seen an entry of a victorious person into the city of those who abused them who were at his throat and who were who attempted to kill him and murder him never has the world seen such a uh, entry of hum- humility and humbleness he was riding on the camel and his head was lowered and his imama had come down and he was touching the hump or the neck of the camel so his head was low down in humility is crying and in this matter he is entering makkah mukarrama these are the akhlaq of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is why he is saying i hold no grudge against anyone in my heart anyone no one whatsoever even if someone attempted for his life he will still forgive him ajeeb safwan ibn umayya umayr ibn wahb were sitting in haram sharif makkah mukarrama after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had migrated to medina they were still on their old ways they were talking he said ya you know i wish safwan said i wish muhammad could i wish someone could go and finish muhammad off you know so umayr ibn wahab said ya i wish that as well i would go to medina and privately you know secretly just ambush him finish him off but if i did that people would catch me and kill me then who's going to look after my children my wife my family Safwan ibn Umayya was a wealthy person so he said oh is that the only problem i'll take care of your family don't worry i'll support them for the rest of their lives i'll, I'll look after your kids if you were to do it then go on and umayr said Are you sure he said yeah he said all right and he set off now safwan was rejoicing in makkah He was saying to everyone, within a few days you're going to hear some good news. There's going to be some good news in a few days. Good news in a few days. Jumping, running around and very happy. And Omer arrives at Medina Munawara. And he has his you know, spear and sword and everything with him. And now he arrives at the Prophet ﷺ, sits with him. And uh, is going around. now he is sitting in one majlis with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam calls him over and he says umair how are you what brings you to medina 
said, so nothing, I've just come to observe and see. Maybe if I like your deen, religion, I will accept. And the Prophet said, and what about that conversation between you and Safwan in front of the Kaaba? And he was shocked. He said, how do you know about that? <laughs> nobody knows about it. It's only me and Safwan. There was nobody there. How come you found out? And Prophet said, Allah, Al-Latif, Al-Khabir has informed me. And he just immediately humbled and said, Rasulullah, please forgive me, please forgive me, please forgive me. <coughs> and he said, give me your hand, I want to embrace Islam. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. Now days pass by, and the good news is not coming to Mecca. And now the bad news comes. Safwan is told that Umar has also changed his deen. Now, if he was one of us, and we found out, that this person had come to kill me, how would we behave? Who would kill him first? In Nalayak, you did this conversation and you come here to kill me, I'm not going to let you off. But look at the Prophet He was so gentle, he spoke to him softly, nicely, he told him, and then Prophet let him off, no nothing, no reproach, and this is what captured the heart of the enemies. Of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is why the Urdu poet says, "Nabi ke khul ke azim tarne sabhi ko apna bana ke choda." Wo log jin mein darindagi thi, unhi ko rehbar bana ke choda. Umar the usse mein chur itna, chale the Hazrat ko katl karne, magar risalat ki ek nazar ne unhe bhi apna bana ke choda. Umar was going to kill the Prophet ﷺ. But Prophet ﷺ's attention, his du'as, worked on Umar. And Umar also became follower of the Prophet ﷺ. In one battlefield, there was battle with some qabail of um, Pai. Prophet ﷺ was brought some captives, prisoners of wars. Among those prisoners of war, there was a lady who had no headgear. And the Prophet ﷺ couldn't see a lady without a headgear. So he took off his shawl and he gave it to her that cover her head, hair. And then he finds out that she was the daughter of Hatim Ta'i. Hatim Ta'i, the great Sakhi, the great generous person. So Prophet ﷺ is kind and generous with her. The prisoners of war are brought and they see the environment of Medina Sharif. The love, the muhabbat, the peace, the unity, the devotion, the worship of the Sahaba, their zikr, fikr, their love for one another, their sacrifices for one another and they, they used to sacrifice everything of theirs for the other person. So when they saw all this, they also embraced Islam. So Hatim Tai's daughter embraces Islam. She was a Christian. And she said to Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, my brother Adi ibn Hatim was one of the leaders in the battlefield and he fled when they were staring at defeat. So allow me to go and bring him here. Give him aman and uh, protection. Prophet ﷺ said, he has aman, protection, peace, a refuge, asylum. We won't harm him. Go. Meet him. So she sets off with some of members from her community and they go and find Adi ibn Hatim and she talks to her brother and she says, come on. You know, you come and meet him. And he says, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with him. And she said, he is the most kind and generous person you could ever think of. He won't harm you, he won't hurt you, he won't harm a fly. And I'm telling you, he's given you a man, he'll stick to his word. He's not a treacherous person who would break his word and kill you secretly. He will give you protection. 
You just come with me, sit with him, talk to him, listen to him. If you like what he says, accept. If not, you can go back to wherever you want to. I have got permission of this for you. I have got this aman and protection for you. Adi ibn Hatim thought for a moment. And he said, okay, this is a good offer. So he comes with them. He comes to Medina Munawwara. And uh, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa receives him well. Hospitable to him. And when he sits down, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi talks to him. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to him, Aslim, Taslam. Ya Adi ibn Hatim, Aslim, Taslam. That's simple words. O oh, Adi, embrace Islam. You will remain at peace and security. Islam gives you peace. Islam gives you salamity. Islam gives you security. Islam is the meaning of peace and security. He, you know, has some conversation. And then he, if he feels like embracing, he embraces Islam. Stays in Medina Munawar a few few days, sees everything, sees the interaction, and he embraces Islam. He goes on to be one of the great Sahabas. One day, our Prophet ﷺ makes a prophecy to him. Ya Adi, if you were to remain alive, you will see that this deen has spread far and wide around the whole peninsula. You will see a woman traveling from Sana'a of Yemen to Makkah Mukarramah alone on her own and there would be no one to obstruct her. So Adi ibn Hatim thought to himself that where are the bandits and highwaymen and the robbers of Tai who lie on, along the way who don't let any caravan pass by in peace. But he said that this prophecy came to, came to light and I saw with my own eyes, there was so much peace within the whole Arabian Peninsula. All the bandits and highway robbers had disappeared. And people could travel freely and with flexibility, wherever, however, however, however much long distance they wanted to go to, with however much wealth they had, nobody was there to touch them, harm them, rob them. Allah brought so much peace with Islam. If you were to stay alive, O Ali, you will see that the treasures of Kisra in Persia will come under the control of the Muslim community. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, do you mean Kisra ibn Hurmuz? Kisra, the son of Hurmuz, the Persian emperor? And he said, yes, that's what I'm, who I'm talking about. And Ali ibn Hatim says, I remained alive to see all the treasures of Kisra brought to Medina Munawara, into the feet of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. So, this is our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his akhlaq, his behavior, his gentleness, his kindness, his patience, his forbearing. <coughs> you know, we have to learn from his akhlaq. This is only one khuluq if we learn of sabr. Today, we have no sabr. We are impatient people. Even this young child will get angry at his father, at his mother. No patience. Oh, mom, you doing this. Mom, dad, you doing that. I don't want to do this. I don't like this. I won't like this. How can you get angry at your mom? How can you get angry at your dad? You have to do sabr. You have to be patient. There is no patience within the society. In our homes, you know, between husband and wife. Between father and son, mother and daughter, between brothers, sisters, let alone other relatives, you know, relatives of uncles, aunties, nephews, nieces. We, who we stay with, interact with everyone, we have no patience with them. So we have to learn from this sabr of Rasul Ipad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, sabr with everyone, with the enemies. And with those who were in the household as well. I mean, look at his wives. They are saying that Prophet wasallam had the best behavior and the best manners. Aisha anha says, I have never seen anyone more good mannered and good in behavior and character than the Prophet wasallam. Whenever someone would call him, he would say, Labbaik. Allah Akbar. The wife is calling the husband and what is he saying? Labbaik. I am at your service. Yes. What can I do for you? Do we ever say Labbaik to our wives? 
If our wife says something, hey, who said that? Why did <laughs> We're always angry and fearsome. Now, Prophet Sallallahu is so gentle, he's saying big to his wife. Even if a kid calls him, he had some stepchildren in the house, Abu Umm Salma's children. And if they, if they also called him and said, Labbaik, yes, dear son, what do, you want, what do you want from me? He was gentle in their upbringing. If they did something wrong, he would, uh, uh, you know, correct them in a polite manner. Umm Salama's son Umar ibn Abi Salama sat down to eat with the Prophet ﷺ. And being a child, his hand was roaming around here and there within the tray, taking something from there, from there. And Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Ula, Sammillah, wa kul bi yaminik, wa kul mimma yalik. Dear child, say Bismillah before you start eating. Eat with your right hand, not with the left, not with both. Just with one hand, eat with your right hand. And eat with from what is in front of you. Don't let your hand run around here and there, because it's all one food. It's all rice. It's all, let's say, for example, let's say kari kichri. So you don't need to keep your hand moving around here and there, because it's all same. So the food is same. So why do you let your hand run around here and there? Take it from your side and eat from your side. So look at the beautiful manner of correcting a young child. So, we need to have, you know, sabr within us. And get rid of that anger, impatience, ghussa, all the time, you know. We have to get rid of that. One sahabi asked for some advice from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, give me some advice. And he said, la ta'udhab. Don't get angry. He again said, Ya Rasulullah, give me some advice. La ta'udhab. For a third time, la ta'udhab. Now, Mufassirin say, because Prophet Sallallahu noticed that that person was a very angry person. And the best advice for him was to be patient, to do sabr, to control his anger. And this is advice for all of us today, for myself as well. You know, I get some, sometimes really angry as well, annoyed. So when I feel annoyed or angry, I have to control myself and be gentle and think that if I get my anger out on my child, my son, I have power to hit him, smack him, do something bad to him. I have the kudra to do that, even though I shouldn't, because of the law of the land, whatever. But what I must think is, if I have power over him, then someone else has more power over me. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I get my anger out on him, what if Allah gets his anger out on me? So this should make me humble. And this should make me think for a moment and calm down and be gentle and nice and kind with my own family members. You know, sometimes we are very soft with others in the masjid, in the community, but we are very harsh and rude with our family at home. So, a good person is he who is good with his family. This is why Prophet ﷺ said, أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا وَأَلْطَفُهُمْ بِأَهْلِهِ خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ That the best among you is the one who is best towards his family members. And I am the best for my family members. You know, Umm Salama رضي الله عنها she became a widow. She was in her iddat. And she remembered the Prophet Sallallahu hadith that if you are struck by a calamity, problem, musibat, then say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati hadihi wa, afli, wa akhlifli khayram minha. Oh Allah, give me sawab and reward in this musibat and give me something that is better than it. So when her husband died, she said, Inna lillahi wa inna rajun. But when she came to the second wordings, that give me sawab and give me something better, she thought to herself, who can be better than my deceased husband, Abu Salama? He was one of the first to embrace Islam. He did hijrah to Habsha, and he did hijrah to Medina, and he died as a shaheed. Where can I find a better husband? Where can I find a more nice, more gentle, better husband than he? 
So she stopped for a moment. She was not going to say it. But then she thought to herself, well, it's the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ, so let me just say it. So she said it. She said, oh Allah, give me sawab and give me some, someone who's better than my husband. As soon as that finishes, the Prophet ﷺ proposes. And she says, فَأَخْلَفَ اللَّهُ لِي خَيْرًا مِنْهُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah gave me better than my husband Abu Salama, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. What do you understand from there? That Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم was the best person for his family members. No family could get someone better than a person like Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. <coughs> so we have to be very very gentle, nice, kind with our own family members. They, they have a haq and a right over us like no other. Our wives, our children are the first because we stay with them. We spend our day and night with them. They deserve our attention most. Even well before our parents as well. Even before our parents, our parents, you know, they have their own home, they have their own life. We have to be kind and nice to them, help them, support them in whatever way we can. But our wives come first because they spend their whole lives with us. And this rishta and connection between husband and wife is the most loving and caring rishta. And the rishta and connection between parents and children is the most respectful rishta. We have to respect our parents. Our love and our rishta with our families should be much more stronger. So what's happening today is, you know, we are going on other ways. We see the lives of the Prophet ﷺ and his wives, the Prophet ﷺ, Sahaba and their wives. We see their connection between them, their love, their muhabbat. And we have to learn from there the good behavior, good akhlaq, Good manners. So, this is why when we see the Prophet ﷺ and his akhlaq, his manners, his behavior, read Shamail Tirmidhi. In you will read the Prophet ﷺ's akhlaq in there. Shamail Tirmidhi starts off with the beautiful features of Rasulullah ﷺ. You know his facial features, his body, <coughs> his good health, and uh, his strength, energy. Very strong person. At the same time, very humble person. So, his physical features are mentioned first in Shama'il al-Tirmidhi and then his internal features. First external and then internal features. And uh, why this? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses a person with good looking, then He blesses him with good manners and good behavior as well. They both go hand in hand. And secondly, when a person has good looks, then people are attracted towards him as well. So Allah gave Prophet ﷺ good looks so that people feel attracted to him. And then Allah gave him good behavior and good manners so that people, you know, fall in love with him. And they sacrifice their everything for him. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made our Prophet ﷺ the best person to have set foot on the face of this earth. And this is what Hassan ibn Sabit said, وَأَحْسَنَ مِنْ كَلَمْ تَلَقَطْتُ عَيْنِي وَأَجْمَلَ مِنْ كَلَمْ تَلِدِ النِّسَاءُ خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأً مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبِي كَأَنَّكَ قَدْ خُلِقْتَ كَمَا تَشَاءُ you, We people use that just for external features. I use it for internal as well. خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأً مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبِي Meaning you had no blemish in you. No external blemish, no internal blemish. No place to put finger on. To, to accuse or to uh, slander somewhere. No, Allah did not give anyone the chance to blame the Prophet ﷺ in any way. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a qasam of the good behavior and good manners of our Prophet ﷺ in the opening verses of Surah Al-Qalam. Wherein he said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Noon. والقلم وما يسطرون ما أنت بنعمة ربك بمجنون وإن لك لأجرا غير ممنون وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم After قسم Allah said I am taking a قسم of the pen and قسم of whatever the malaika note down from Lohi Mahfuz 
under oath, Allah is saying, under oath, I am declaring this. Three things. مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ By the grace of your Rabb, you are not an insane person like the mushrikeen and your enemies claim that Muhammad was insane. Tawbah, tawbah, astaghfirullah. You are not a madman, insane, like people say he's majnoon, he's mad, he's insane. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ Secondly, I'm t- saying a qasam that your reward <coughs> is going to be so much that it's never ending. غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ You know, a mad person is not rewarded for his actions because he doesn't know what he's doing, he doesn't know what he's saying. So, he is not rewarded nor is he punished for his actions because his, his mind is not there. He has no brain. He, he is mad. A 20 year old person but his brain is like a 2 year old kid. So people don't take his actions seriously. Whatever he says people just ignore him, laugh it off. So he doesn't get any punishment or any reward for what he does. So Allah is saying why do people call you mad when your reward is going to be uh, 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 beyond imagination it's never going to cut off it's going to be continuous until the day of Qiyamah because whatever your Ummah does you will keep getting reward from there and your Ummah will keep sending durood and salam to you so your reward will keep increasing so under oath I am saying you are not a mad person and I am saying that you are going to get such a huge reward for your for your deliverance of the message, for your da'wah, for your tabliq, for your efforts, that is never going to cease, that is going to be continuous until the day of Qiyamah. And under oath, third thing I am saying is, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You are of a sublime character. Your character, top characters, unbelievable characters, unbelievable good manners and behavior of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah is saying this under qasam and under oath. Who are we to describe the akhlaq and the characters and the behavior of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah himself is saying it. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقِ نَعْزِيرٌ So, we have to study our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa his good behavior. Read Shamayla Tirmizi. You know your Mawlana Abdul Subhan sahab, he has retranslated Shamayla Tirmizi into English. Beautiful, he's changed the whole translation uh, from before, uh, what it was, and it's totally different now. He look, he's, mashallah, he's well versed with Urdu, Arabic, and English. So when a person has command over all three languages, then he can translate properly. So, a Torah publication are going to publish it, inshallah. Let's hope it comes out quickly. So keep it with you, and uh, you know, before going to sleep at night, read a few pages, of Shamayl al-Tirmizi and uh, you know uh, understand the, 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 the characteristics, the features, the behavior, the akhlaq, the manners, the good behavior of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we should try and inculcate those manners within us, bring them within us and be a carbon copy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was reading this book, very nice book called um, Precious Gems. This, you know, with regards to this behavior, one story, akhlaq, good behavior, amanat dari. We talked about one was sabr, right? Sabr, patience. Another story comes to my mind. Sabr, patience. You know, during the time when Muslims were in Spain, Spain was at the peak Kartaba University, Granada University, Civil University. People used to go there like people go to Oxford and Cambridge today. They used to go to study from here, from England. Muslims were there. At that time it so happened that this Muslim old man, gardener, was in his garden looking after all the flowers and fruits and trees. And some young man came in rushing. And the old man said, what's that? Why are you so scared? Why are you terrified? These people are after me. They're going to kill me. Please give me protection. Please protect me. Please protect me. Give me protection. He said, all right. Come, come. He takes him to a place. He opens the room. He said, go, hide in there. And he hides in there. And then he comes back, start working. 
and people come rushing after him. He said, um, you know, this young person, you know, he has fled. We, we saw him coming over here. Where is he? Where is he? Or get hold of him. He said, no, 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 you can't get hold of him. We saw him coming here in, this, in your garden. Yeah, yeah, he did come here. Well, we hand him over to us. He said, no, I've given him safety, security. I'm not going to hand him over to you. And um, they said, but he's committed a huge crime. What crime? He's killed someone. Oh, that's something huge crime. And they said, who did he kill? And they said, your own son. My son? I said, yeah. And the old man said, well, I've given him protection. I said, you are safe. Nothing will happen to you. So he said, okay, it's my son. So leave it between me and him. You go away from here. So he calls him over, talks to him. He says, what happened? He says, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I didn't want to, but I, we had an argument. Something happened. I don't know what happened to me. And I just hit him somewhere and I killed him. He said, look, you came in my house, my garden, my house. I gave you safety, security. I'm going to do sabar. I don't want to take revenge from you. Go, you're free. This is, you know, akhlaq of Muslims. He gave me his word. He let him off. Go. So reading this book, Precious Gems, Hajjad ibn Yusuf was a great zalim. You know, he once attacked one place, killed people. Someone was left, he said, leave one of them behind. I will talk to him, finish him off tomorrow. And he said to Qutayba ibn Muslim, look after him throughout the night. I'll call him tomorrow morning, speak to him. Then I'll decide. So Qutayba ibn Muslim said, all right, he takes him home. Now the person says to him, Qutayba, you know, I know you have to look after me, but please, give me respite just for tonight. I have some amanats of people deposited to me. I'm looking after them. And nobody knows about those deposits except me. So if I die, then those amanats and deposits will be wasted Somebody in my family will take over thinking it's their money, property. So let me just go home and return those deposits to the rightful owners and I'll come back to you tomorrow morning. And he said, Allah is my guarantor. Allah is my kafil. Allah is wakil. I give you my word, I'll come back. Now he said that in uh, such an you know, affectionate manner that Qutayba's heart softened and he said alright go but once he had left Qutayba was such over, suddenly overcome with fear what did I do? I should have let him go if he doesn't come back in the morning the Hajjah is going to kill me and he spent the night in a sleepless state he couldn't sleep he just kept on tossing and turning whole night in that manner in the morning he hears a knock on the door and that man is there standing right before him. And he said, You came back, you know, you know you're gonna get killed. You came back. He said, Yeah, I gave you my word. And I said, Allah is my guarantor, Allah is my kafil. So I have to respect the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Qutayba ibn Muslim is amazed. In the morning, he goes to the uh, Darbar Parliament of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. And Hajjaj ibn Yusuf sees that Qutayba's eyes are red. And he's not slept all night. So he asked Qutayba, why are your eyes so red and you're so fatigued and you're so sleepy? What's wrong? And he told him the whole story. <laughs> and Hajjad said, okay, I'll let you, I'll let him off because of his amanat dari. Because of his trustworthiness and because of his good behavior. Even my heart, Hajjad's heart is softened. And he said, i let him off, go. So, good behavior, good khalaq, good manners transferred from our Prophet ﷺ to our community, to our Muslim brothers and sisters. So, we also should inculcate that good behavior, good akhlaq, good manners of Rasulullah within us. Emulate him. Be a carbon copy of our Prophet ﷺ. May Allah give us tawfiq to do so. May Allah accept. 
May Allah be pleased with us. Jazakallah. Thank you very much. It's been a very nice audience sitting so quietly. All these young boys, Usman, mashallah, quiet young boy, and all others as well. May Allah reward you and may Allah be pleased with us all. Take your sir. The Rush Sharif, short dua for Allah. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukru. Allahumma la nusri sanan alayk. أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما اللهم اهدنا لأحسن الأخلاق لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عنا سيئها لا يصرف عنا سيئها إلا أنت اللهم أنت حسنت خلقنا فحسن خلقنا اللهم أنت حسنت خلقنا فحسن خلقنا يا رحم الرحمين O oh Allah, you are the most merciful among those who show mercy. You are the most kind. You are the most generous. You are the most merciful. We beg you for your rahmah. We beg you for your mercy. We beg you for your kindness. O oh Allah, please have mercy upon us. O oh Allah, please forgive us. O oh Allah, please make us good Muslims. O oh Allah, please give us good behavior, good manners, good akhlaq. Please give us the ability to... Emulate and copy our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's akhlaq to be a carbon copy of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. O Allah, please give us the ability to be gentle and kind and nice with our family members, our partners, and our children, our parents, grandparents, and our relatives. O Allah, please. Oh, keep us steadfast on salat e mustaqim Please give us the ability to understand the importance of akhlaq along with ibadat and muamalat and muasharat. Oh Allah, please keep us steadfast on salat e mustaqim Oh Allah, please give us the ability to follow in the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Wasallam by keeping our hearts clean, by having no grudges and malice and jealousy and hatred with our fellow human beings. Oh Allah... <coughs> Have mercy upon the Muslims of this locality. O oh Allah, this masjid which is under construction. O oh Allah, please help and give you a, oh Allah help in the completion of this masjid. We thank you for the construction that has taken place with your uh, tawfiq and with your help and with your support. O oh Allah, we beg you for your support in its completion as well. O oh Allah, give the Muslims the abilities to spend in your path and accept their spendings as well. And O oh Allah, give us a very nice beautiful house of Allah over here and give us the ability to utilize it in the best possible manner. O oh Allah, give good reward to Maulana Ibrahim Saab, Maulana Yusuf Saab and our um, brothers and sisters, committee members and management committee and everyone over here and give good reward to the congregation, these young boys and our friends who have come here and sat for so long to listen to beautiful words of your deen and religion. O oh Allah, and give good reward to those who are also listening at home as well and accept our humble efforts be pleased with us O oh Allah give us all those good things which your beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked from you protect us from all those evils trials tribulations problems from which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek your protection Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabu al-raheem wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala sayyidina muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا رَحْمَ اللَّهِ